Warning, prior to beginning the process of installing your new Willwood brake kit, be sure you have thoroughly read all instructions and warnings that are provided. Disc brakes should only be installed by someone knowledgeable and competent in the functioning and maintenance of disc brakes. In this video, we'll show you how to install front disc brakes on a 2003 Chevy C5 Z06 Corvette. This brake kit does not include flex lines. OEM brake lines will not adapt to Willwood calipers. Check the assembly instructions or associated component section for brake line recommendations before assembly. In addition, Willwood offers an extensive listing of brake lines and fittings on our website. Also, this kit is primarily for race applications. Begin assembly by placing the T-nuts into the hat. Apply red Loctite 271 to bolts and using an alternating sequence, bolt the hat to the rotor. Using a torque wrench and a 5 16 12 point socket, torque the bolts to 120 inch pounds using an alternating sequence. Next, safety wire bolts using standard 132nd inch diameter stainless steel safety wire. Remove the two pad retaining pins from the caliper by carefully popping out the pin retaining clips and sliding the pins out. Brake pads included in this kit are intended for high temperature race use only. Extended use at low temperature can cause accelerated rotor and pad wear. Please see the associated components list on the data sheet for alternative brake pad compounds for other uses. Insert the brake pads into the caliper from the bottom. With the friction material facing the rotor, secure the brake pads in place with the pad retaining pins and clips. Remove the front wheels. Remove the caliper bolts. Pull off the caliper and hang it out of the way using a wire hanger or something similar. Slide the rotor off the hub. With the supplied washers on the caliper bracket mounting bolts, Slide the caliper bracket mounting bolts through the OEM caliper mounting ears from the inboard side. Initially, place two shem washers on each bolt between the mounting ear and the bracket. Mount the caliper bracket to the spindle using a half inch drive and a 21 millimeter socket. Slide the hat and rotor assembly onto the axle hub. Install three lug nuts to keep the hat and rotor assembly in place while continuing with the installation. Add the spacers and two shims to the caliper bracket stud. Mount the caliper onto the bracket. View the rotor through the top opening of the caliper. The rotor should be centered in the caliper. If not, adjust by adding or subtracting shims between the bracket and the upright. The top of the pads should also be flush with the outside diameter of the rotor. If not, adjust by adding or subtracting shims between the caliper and the bracket. With this particular vehicle, we need to remove two shims to center the caliper. Once the caliper alignment is correct, apply Loctite 271 to the caliper bracket mounting bolts and torque to 77 foot-pounds. We also had to add two more shims between the caliper and bracket. Mount the caliper and verify caliper alignment is correct. Add the caliper bracket washers and the 12 point caliper lock nuts. Torque the caliper lock nuts to 47 foot pounds. Add Teflon tape to the 90 degree caliper fitting. Install a fitting into the caliper using a 7 16 wrench.
Remove the clip from the stock hard line. Remove the stock brake line and fitting. Install the Willwood flex line. Add the retaining clip. Connect the other end of the Willwood braided stainless steel flex line to the caliper fitting. Root along the same path as the oleum holes and secure the flex line as necessary to prevent contact with moving suspension, brake, or wheel components. Before driving the vehicle, be sure to bleed the brakes. Follow the supplementary instructions included with your kit for bleeding, pad bedding, and a minimum test procedure. Install the wheel and torque to manufacturer specifications. Warning, do not drive on untested brakes. Brakes must be tested after installation or maintenance. Minimum test procedure. Make sure pedal is firm. Hold firm pressure on pedal for several minutes. It should remain in a position without sinking. If pedal sinks towards floor, check system for leaks. Do not drive vehicle if pedal does not stay firm or can be pushed to the floor with normal pressure. At very low speed, 2 to 5 miles per hour, apply brakes hard several times while turning steering from full left to full right. Repeat several times, remove the wheels, and check that components are not touching, rubbing, or leaking. Minimum test procedure continued. Carefully examine all brake components, brake lines, and fittings for leaks and interference. Make sure there is no interference with wheels or suspension components. Drive vehicle at a low speed, 15 to 20 miles per hour, making moderate and hard stops. Brakes should feel normal and positive. Again, check for leaks and interference. Always test the vehicle in a safe place where there is no danger to or from other people or vehicles. Always wear seatbelts and make use of all safety equipment.